So the big smile on my face today is that Rudy and I have been preaching to each other and we are both saying, I'm guilty. <laughs> so we're, we're in chapter 7 of Deuteronomy. Thanks for being with us. Uh, this ought to fit you pretty good, Rudy. We're talking about the choice chosen people. Yep. And you be one of them. <laughs> All right, here we go. Verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that you're about to enter and occupy, and he clears many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, I may have pronounced them correctly. Pretty good. All right. Seven nations mightier and more numerous than you. Now, the Hebrew people were a million and a half at least. Those are, that's a big crowd to clear out. Yes, it is. Uh, and when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must utterly destroy them. Make no covenant with them. Show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them, giving your daughters your sons and taking their daughters for your sons. For that would turn away your children from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you and he would destroy you quickly. But this is how you must deal with them. Break down their altars, smash their pillars, hew their sacred poles, burn their idols with fire, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Uh, Rudy, let's just talk. He's bringing them into a land, and they are to destroy all images of the false gods of that land. Well, in, in the overview that I that I that I've been thinking about is that, you know, when we were reading Isaiah, uh, we're talking about the empires that came in because of Israel's disobedience. Right. And that the Lord used them, those empires, the Assyrian, the Babylonians, eventually the Medes and the Persians and the Romans, to, as an instrument of justice against his people. Ultimately, God is using the Israelites as justice yes. against these seven group people people groups. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, it didn't happen overnight. Even though it uh, it seems to us that it did, David did not defeat the yet the Jebusites until 300 years from that. Mm -hmm. Right. So this took a long period of time. That 300 years is approximately the amount of time the United States has been a Correct. country. Correct. So how much, what do we really know about the Revolutionary War? Right. Right. Uh, the same thing would have been true for the Israelites 300 years later when David conquers Jerusalem, which was the capital of the Jebusites. Right. But the point is, is that these gods that the other that the other nations had were kind of in the periphery all the time because they were living very close to, to one another. Israel today uh, is approximately the size of New Jersey. Right. The complete land was probably 50%, 70% larger than that. The land that was promised to Abraham that would from the Tigris River, from the Euphrates River all the way to the end of the Red Sea, uh, which is a much larger country. Right. But <clears throat> that's, that's the, the people groups that surround Israel right now are still ancestors of those people. Yes. And there is an irrational hatred of Israel. That is actually true throughout the earth. And anti-Semitism, and I think you're right, uh, Satan is behind it because Satan wants to destroy God's treasured people. Now, to be clear, because everybody that believes Jesus is the king of the universe uh, have become part of the commonwealth of Israel. We have not really seen Christianity uh, see the brunt of the world in the same way that Israel 
Jewish people have. But as I read prophecy, I see, I see that we will be persecuted. Yes. And we have to understand that God said that this was going to happen. We read about it happening over and over and over again. We can't expect that we're going to get out of this without getting and getting burned. Yes. Uh, because his servants serve him. Yeah. And that, you know, in, in, in a roundabout way, you know, when we're thinking that we're righteous and that this is all going to happen to somebody else, that's putting God to the test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of thoughts running through my head. Uh, one of them is I know folks who really hold up this Christians being persecuted idea and their uh, unfortunate, in my opinion, response is to circle the wagons. Let's circle the wagons, let's protect each other, let's live in our own little world. It's prideful. And let's wait for Jesus to come back again. Uh, I think what Jesus told his followers was get on with the mission. You know, he, he told his followers uh, that they were to go into all the world and to proclaim what he has done and to teach people to live a Jesus kind of life and to immerse them in the life of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's, it's, it's messy and it's, for some people, dangerous to do that. But it's what God has called us to do. The second thought I have is going back to this idea of why are they to destroy the other gods? And I want to, I want to put a 50 cent word on my board here, okay. if I can spell it. And that word is syncretism, S-Y-N-C-R-E-T-I-S-M. And the syncretism is the blending of the little, the little gods with the one true God. And the danger is that this all gets so confused that you you say, I think it's in Hosea, they were saying the Hebrew name of God, and give me the correct pronunciation. Jehovah. Jehovah. They were saying Jehovah with their mouth, but they were thinking Baal, Baal, the Canaanite God. And and let me say that again. Hosea would say, they were saying Jehovah, but they were thinking Baal. They had become so intertwined. The danger that we face when we don't take care of those lesser gods is that we will blend these two together. And so one of the dangers in the United States is that we will blend our version of God with the one true God and that we will adopt the philosophies and the ideas and the thoughts of the United States and we'll call that Christianity when we when we miss what God's all about now it's it's arrogant of me to say that uh, as this is my opinion what you need to do is you need to go really investigate what the Bible has to say kind of cover to cover like Rudy does, reading all the way beginning to end and let it soak into your mind so that you can discern how, uh, how you can separate that from what's going on with your life. Well, you know, one of the admonitions that happens in Deuteronomy over and over and over again is to remember. And when you remember the, the two greatest miracles in, in, in the world so far, was the crossing of the Red Sea and the circumstances that led up to that, which took 400 years to build, and the the incarnation and the and the life of Jesus and the, and His resurrection and the giving of the Holy Spirit. If we if we lose sight of the magnitude of those two events, it becomes much easier to make. God, small g, equal right. to that. You got but what God has done anything like that in history, Correct. there is none. Absolutely. 
Hey, thanks for being a part. God bless you. Keep on studying. We'll see you tomorrow.